Hey everyone, it's Akshay here and welcome to this video series where we'll be learning how to create the Asteroids game. So let's take a look at the final project. We have the spaceship here which is our main character or player and here we have the trigger button. So whenever we press the trigger button we can press, we can fire lasers to destroy the asteroids. So let's play this really quickly and you can see that we can destroy these asteroids up here and they spawn at random locations at every five seconds. Now this asteroid is following me so let's destroy it really quick and if an asteroid hits you you lose the background turns red and that's the end of the game. So let's take a look at the steps we need to take in order to make this game. So here are the steps to build. You can find this in slide three of the presentation. In step one we need to add the player. In step two we need to add the cloner. This will be the object that clones the asteroids. Step 3 is to add the center point. The center point will be right behind the player and will allow for the cloner object to rotate around constantly after we do step 4 which is give center point the hinge behavior. In step 5 we add our first event that says the camera and center point should follow the player. And in step 6 we add the control pad behavior so we can move around the player spaceship. In step 7, we turn on general physics for the player and give it some drag. In step 8, we'll add the asteroid object and give it the move towards behavior. So the asteroid object and any clones of it will move towards the player. In step 9, we'll create and assign the master asteroid to the asteroid class. And in step 10, we'll add two arced lines to lock the master asteroid in place. The master asteroid is basically the original asteroid, number one, because we need the first original asteroid to make clones of it. If we don't have anything to clone, we can't do anything. So we need at least one asteroid to define how to make the clones. In step 11, we'll add the laser object and give it to the impact effect. The impact effect will activate whenever the laser hits an asteroid. In step 12, we'll create the laser class and assign that laser to the laser class. In step 13, we'll add the launch object to use as a button. So that's this right here. For steps 14 through 19, they're all events. So for 14, we'll move the lasers. 15, we'll shoot lasers when launch is pressed. 16, we'll remove old laser clones after a few seconds. And in step 17, we'll clone the asteroids. In step 18, we'll destroy the asteroid whenever collided with the laser. In step 19, the player will lose when touching the asteroid. So whenever the asteroid hits the player, background turns red, or anything happens and the player will disappear. So let's start building this. Let's go home, create new, and here we have a blank project. So for step one, let's add a player, name it, and make it a non-solid. So let's go into our library, Go into Artworks and search up for Ship and let's drag in this spaceship right here. After dragging it in, let's move it to the center, make it a little bit bigger, name it Player, and turn the solid off. And that's it for step one. So for step two, let's make the cloner object and also make it a non-solid. Let's go into the library, go into basic shapes, and let's select a square, drag it in, and let's change the color to be uh, greenish. So that should be a good color. Now let's make it smaller. Let's move it right here, and then under Appearance, let's turn off the solid for this again. And that's it for step two. So for step three, let's add the center point object. Let's go into the library, and this time just drag in a circle. Let's also change the color of this to be greenish, and turn off the solid. Cool. Now let's make it smaller. smaller than the player and have it right here. Now what we also want to do is click on this, go into appearance and change hidden to on. 
can do this for the cloner as well. Go into Appearance, go into Hidden, and turn it on. And be sure to name this cloner and this as center point. All right, cool. And that's it for step three. Okay, so for step four, let's give the center point the behavior, add new behavior, the hinge behavior. Now we want the hinge to be joined to the cloner. And we want the show joint at runtime to be turned off since we don't want to see this blue line. And that's it for step four. So for step five, we want the camera and center point to always follow the player. So to do this, let's go into the event manager and say when the player is sensing that it's being seen, yes, let's have the clo not the cloner, the center point position, set position to object player, and let's have the camera position, set position to object player. Let's press done, and now we're done with step five. For step six, let's give the control pad behavior to the player. So click the player, go into behaviors, let's add a new behavior, and let's drag in control pad. Let's change the speed to around one meters per second. And let's turn change angle to on, as well as physics. And now let's test it out. So if you press play, we can see that whenever we move, that it changes angles and the player always stays at the center of the screen. And that's what we want to happen. And now we're done with step six. So for step seven, we need to turn on general physics for the player. So click on the player, go into physics, let's turn it on, and let's give it a little drag of 6%. And be sure to turn off gravity because we don't want the player to fall down. And that's it for step seven. Okay, so for step eight, we need to add the asteroid and give it a behavior of move towards. So let's go into the library, go under artwork, and let's add an asteroid. There we go, let's drag this into the scene, X out of the library, go into the asteroid, and in behaviors, let's add a new behavior, X out of this asteroid, into behaviors, and let's add the move towards behavior. And let's customize this. So we want the asteroid to move towards the object player. Let's have physics turned on and the active zone set to 25 meters. There we go. And be sure to change the speed to 1.5 meters per second. And that should be it for step eight. So for step nine, let's create the asteroid class. So let's click on the asteroid, go into classes, create new class, and let's name this asteroid. Awesome, so now this main asteroid is in the asteroid class, and that's it for step nine. So for step 10, we want to add two arched lines to lock the master asteroid in place. So let's go into the library, and in basic shapes, Let's add two arched lines. Let's change the color to a bit red. Same for this, so we can see it. And be sure to change one of them to have a rotation of 180 degrees. Now let's zoom out all the way and move all of these objects to the very right side of the screen and form a little circle as well with the arched lines. Once you've done this, move the asteroid to the center of the circle. And now you have locked the asteroid in place. So now be sure to go into the arched line, go into appearance and set show, event, and show an event manager to off and turn its opacity all the way down to 0%. Do the same for the top arch line as well. Go into appearance, show an event manager to off and opacity to 0%. Awesome. And now we're done with step 10. 
So for step 11, let's add the laser object and give it to the impact effect. So let's go into the library and let's go into artwork and search for laser. Here it is, laser beam. Let's drag it in and let's click on it. And in effect, let's add a new effect and drag in the impact effect. And once we're done with that, let's just move this laser beam to the right with the asteroid over here. And now we're done with step 11. So for step 12, let's create and assign this laser beam to the laser class. So click on the laser beam, go into classes, create new class. Let's go into laser, press enter, and now it is in the laser class. So that's it for step 12. So for step 13, let's add a launch object and add it to the user interface layer. So let's go into the library, let's go into basic shapes and drag in a circle. Let's change the color of the circle to have an appearance of light blue. That's fine. And let's change the layer here to user interface so that it doesn't interact with the objects in the scene. Because we want it to be a button we can click. And let's move it to the bottom right. And once we zoom in all the way to our player, you can see that if we play this, this button will always stay at the bottom right hand corner. And be sure to name this circle the launch button. And once you're done naming it, you're done with step 13. So now let's get into making all the events. So for step 14, let's make it so the lasers move. So go into the event manager, let's add a new event and say when the laser beam, or actually the laser class, so any laser, if it senses that it's being seen, yes, let's have that affected laser, its movement move forward over time five meters per second. So this will make it so that whenever a laser is on screen, it is moving at five meters per second forward. And that's it for step 14. So for step 15, we want to shoot lasers when the launch button is pressed. So let's add a new event and say when the launch button senses that it's being touched down, let's have the player clone clone object the laser beam. And let's also have the launch button make a sound, play sound, and let's find the shoot sound. And that's it for step 15. So for step 16, we want to remove old laser clones. So let's add a new event and say when a laser runtime has existed for longer than five seconds, let's have that laser clone remove itself. And that's it for step 16. For step 17, we want to clone the asteroid every two seconds from the cloner. So let's add a new event and say when system runtime repeats every two seconds, confirm do find the cloner object and say clone clone object asteroid. And now we're done with step 17. Okay, so for step 18, we want to destroy the asteroid if it's hit by a laser. So let's add a new event and say when the laser class senses is touching object, the asteroid class, we want the affected asteroid clone to be removed. And we want the affected object from the laser sound to play sound, hit one, and we want the affected object from laser, impact particle effect, run effect. And that's it for step 18. Now onto the last step, step 19. We want the game to end whenever an asteroid hits the player. So let's add a new event and say when the player senses is touching object 
any in the asteroid class, let's change the system global background color to red and let's have the player appearance set hidden to yes. Let's press done and let's check out the final project. So now let's check out the final project. If we press play, we can see that we can move around. Whoops, we're already hit by asteroids. So one thing you might want to do is move this cloner a little bit outwards outside of the screen. So let's zoom out. And first, if you want to see exactly what the cloner does and how it moves, let's actually change the appearance to not hidden and press play. You can see that this cloner is spinning. That's how the hinge behavior of the center point works. So let's pause this, make this cloner be hidden again, and let's stretch it out a bit, all the way out here. And let's have the center point be right below the player. And we can make it go under the player by pressing this button right here, which moves it to a layer below. There we go. Now if we zoom back into 100%, move the player to the center, we can see that the asteroids come a little bit more slowly. Let me replay that. And there we go. So now we can move around and shoot these asteroids. And that's pretty much it. So the asteroid hit us and that is the end of the game. So that's it for this series. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out the next activity and I'll see you in the next video.